Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit and hang out with you. Uh, Mr. Bob is here. Hi, Mr. Bob. Harold is hosting. Hi, Harold. Thank you for hosting. Uh, if you're a subscriber, you can throw the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe Moat in the chat. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, you just say hi. It's nice to know you're here. As always, you don't have to chat, but it's really nice to see people in the chat because you are pleasant, uh, nice people. And also, uh, that way I'm not just talking into the void. I'm talking to you, and I know who I'm talking to. Uh, you're no under, no under no obligation to do that, of course. Lashbrook's here. Hi, Lashbrook. But uh, it is always nice to see folks uh, and have people chatting. Uh, I kept the wrestling background that I used last night. Um, I like it. I figured I'll give it a shot. Maybe it's going to stay for a while. Uh, maybe I want to get a reali realistic photo, maybe. Hi, The Hollow. Welcome, welcome. Harold's here, of course. Happy to have you here, The Hollow. Um, on a Thursday evening for some model kit building and assembly. We got uh, some fun stuff to go today. This is the Camaris uh, Vidar High Grade. Uh, it has a lot of stickers, I, some of which I like, some of which I don't. Uh, it's got those cool shoulder uh, shields that we'll build. But yeah, so we did uh, the head and the chest and uh, the arms. We completed one leg. This was all on Monday. Uh, and, uh, we got one foot. So we're going to build the other leg. Then we'll build, uh, the waist. Then we'll put it all together. Uh, and then we'll start doing the backpack. And then we'll do the lance and the katana. Um, can I say what one of, one of my favorite silly things about this kit has always been? is the weapon that that's stored in the knee which is just the silliest idea it's a great idea i just love it so much it's such a silly thing that it's just like oh yeah that, that that's stored in the knee it's like what and they have the cool shield things it's a, it's a fun kit um also there's a little bit of color in this instruction manual which is always nice to see um how's everybody doing tonight i hope you're doing well uh we already got a great solid crew here hoping a few more people join us of course always like to uh to do these kind of things for a lot of people i had fun last night calling matches um the ibo mechs are so weird and unique says mr bob and the hollow says beta three should have new weapons yeah yeah i can see that yeah no um i, I think the iron blood orphans we talked about this before how the uh, both the naming convention for the uh, the Gundams and also the overall design takes so much from a lot of mobile suit design in Gundam is saying okay humans you know last night we had the uh, uh, um, the turn A Gundam right it's just that's a man that's just a French man um, uh, but the mobile suits in Iron Blood Orphans take their references from imagination from demons and it makes for very interesting kits uh the armor placement that's design uh they're they're all over the place but even like this is the leg like the leg is like a talent it's it or the foot i should say it's always interesting dude wants his rug is here hello dude wants the rug harold says one week until pax yes this time next week i will um, have finished the easy baking challenge, um, and I'll have spent a day in Boston. I'm leaving next Thursday for Boston. Um, build schedule tonight, Saturday, normal times, Monday, normal times. Next Wednesday, I'm doing a build stream. So I'll do two build streams next week and end on Wednesday. Saturday, I'm going to try it a week from the Saturday while I'm in PAX. I'm going to try to do something for you. Um, and I'm thinking I'm going to do a, a Twitch Sing stream on Tuesday, uh, where it's that thing where if you donate five bucks, I'll sing whatever silly song you want. And you can donate to like Streamlabs or PayPal. Uh, so basically it's like buy me singing a bad song. Um, I think I'm going to do that. Just a little seed money. Uh, I am, uh, as you are well aware, I'm living that uh, freelance life. And a big check that would be really nice to have is... Um, they're saying now, uh, it would probably be March. And I was like, what? So I like can't, basically I have rent money and then I have m 
money, and I would be in a good position if this check came in, but since it's not, I have to be like, put that money into red, and leave that there. And now it's like, oh, okay, change some stuff that you were thinking of doing. Okay. So, you know, having a little, a little pocket money for packs would be uh, helpful. Because I don't want to borrow against my rent. You know what I mean? Because I don't know when that check's coming. You know, freelance shit. You guys know this. Uh, when you are dependent on people doing the things they need to do, and they are do not need to do those things in order for... They, they don't need to do them. So you're like, oh, but what if you did the thing that you're supposed to do that I need you to do? And they're just like, ah, yeah, we could, but we're probably not gonna... Instead, we'll just leave you hanging. Um, all right, so we got, uh, we, we're going to get back into the Kamars. Uh, I put the video up today. I don't know if you saw it or not. Our next kit came in the mail. Uh, the Perfume Cuda, I believe it's called. Or per perfume Yuda. Yeah, because it's the Cuda Pirates. It's the Perfume Yuda. It's the Cuda Pirates. Uh, those are, these snakes are alive. That's the next thing we're going to build. We're going to build Boa Hancock ship. Also, uh, Perfume Yuta, still not the worst name for uh, Boa as a cool ship. Boa indeed does have a cool ship, Ultron. You're not wrong. It's a big, cool ship. Still not the worst named ship in One, uh, uh, in one Piece. Because uh, that name goes to the very cool submarine slash ship uh, of Law, Law Law's uh, pirate ship, uh, which is called the Polar Tang. Polar Tang is a terrible name. So, yeah. But yeah, that came in the mail. Thank you, Ultron, for picking that up. I very much appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's off my wish list, so it's the next thing we'll build. I got it right over there, ready to go, uh, if we finish this up today. I don't think we're going to finish this today. I think we're going to finish this on Saturday. Because we still have, you know, the leg and the waist. We've, we've got stuff to do on this kit. Uh, I think this is like a two and a half stream build. And not a two stream build. That's my guess based on what I know from, you know, building model kits. Uh, over the past, whatever, couple of years. That is uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, as I said, I had a, a very good time. Uh, what's going on here? Huh. There is... Hmm. So, uh, you're going to hear a doubling because I'm going to go to my own Twitch page and look at how I'm looking at Twitch. How I'm looking at Twitch. Yeah, I'm not full screen. Or I'm not widescreen here. That's very weird. Okay, so... Uh, uh, I will... Tonight, I'm going to just be a little smaller, uh, and I will take a look at my settings to see what's going on there, because I don't think I can fix that uh, in the stream. I wonder if my other video, the videos I recorded today, I wonder if I'm going to have to record those again, or if that's going to end up looking okay. Um, uh, I updated Windows, and it was one of those big updates that, like, Anytime, like, it forgot all my USB drivers to support. And also, when I opened OBS, it was like, I had to pick my sound settings again. So I thought I had done everything I needed to do uh, to fix the issues I was having. But I get, or, or you know, restall stuff and, and whatever. But I'm wondering if this video is also going to look like that. Mute the sound here. I don't know if it's going to... Nope, that looks full screen. Okay, I don't know what's going on. Uh, yes, Ultron. Uh, the Camaris' face. Yes, so you can see here, um, there is a, a piece... Uh, uh, well, you probably can't see it too well. There's a piece of purple in the face uh, that I had forgotten to put on. And I had to disassemble the whole face and then reattach it. But I did manage to get that piece that I had forgotten to put on. So it did fix it. Yes. I did off stream because it's a very tiny piece. Um, what's up here? There we go. That's better. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if that's, uh, I don't know what's going on. 
I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to check my settings here, folks, but um, maybe it's just my settings. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but I apologize if anything's weird about the stream tonight. I apologize if Whoa. anything... There, yeah. Look in there. There is, uh, yeah, there is some unused real estate, and I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, as far as I can tell, your stream looks normal. Yeah, I'll try. Uh, to me, it's just that I have, uh, there's black bars on the sides of my stream, uh, which normally I'm taking up the full stream. So I don't know what's going on with that, but I will investigate um, after the fact and look at my settings. Uh, but um, everything seems to be okay. Yeah, I had to like, I luckily I, I was recording things today, so I didn't run into issue, but I was like, Hey, how come I can't, uh, my audio's not working? And then I looked and I was like, oh, okay, that's why. Um, it was one of those updates. Uh, where, I hate those updates where it's just like, you know, you plug in a USB device and then you start hearing that noise and you're like, no, but you know this device. I've been using this webcam on this computer for a very long time. What is your problem? And it's like, oh, no, no. Oh, it worked. Just freaked me out. Uh, yeah, so working on the leg again. Um, hi to everybody that's here. We got we got a bunch of folks watching tonight, which is always nice. Nice to have you here. Uh, reminder that um, it, the best way to know when I'm streaming is to uh, give me a follow here, turn your notifications on. Um, I do tweet about when I'm streaming throughout the day and give reminders. Uh, I don't know if I I don't know if I do that too much. Um, but I, I try to, I try to like, you know, make sure people know, cause I, constantly I do hear from people, um, from various people that they're like, Oh, I, w I didn't know you were streaming tonight. And it's like, Oh, okay. Um, but I do try to keep people informed so that they can check in with me, see what's going on. Uh, I know for some folks, it's just like, yeah, Thursday doesn't look great. Or, you know, last night. They were really interested in watching some wrestling matches, which I understand. It's not everybody's thing. Uh, it is silly and weird, and I do enjoy doing that. It's nice to mix things up. Uh, but, uh, you know, still one of those things like, I got to think about like another thing to do in those streams. What I need is something to give my voice a little bit of rest, because it is, those streams are me talking just constantly like there is no break in in a stream like that for me to like really take a breath uh oh thank you very much uh saying the last night's stream was awesome i appreciate that i have i have fun doing it it, it is um there are like obviously um i don't i don't make custom wrestlers those are all wrestlers that i found on the the workshop but folks have done incredible work in building those things and it's very fun to be able to, you know, to do commentary over those matches and see uh, the silliness that exists out there. But I, um, I got to figure out like a thing to do like in between matches. Uh, it might be doing some pre-records. Um, just got to build Pat Bear Vocaloid. Yes, Lord Stockton. Hi, Lord Stockton. Got to get myself a, a Vocaloid. That would, uh, that would definitely help. No, I, I've been thinking because I was thinking of like doing something for like a halftime show. And it would have to be something that I recorded ahead of time. But I, I was thinking about doing something like that. Like doing uh, maybe character promos or something. Um, like I don't know if, you, uh, if you've ever watched this. Um, because he has so much content. And there's just there's just so little time in the world to watch things. But um, uh, Xavier Woods, uh, Austin Creed, has a uh, YouTube channel. Up, up, down, down. Which I'm sure you're aware of. Um, and one of the things he does is he does this kind of like, um, manager mode thing, competition show, um, uh, with, uh, with Tyler Breeze. And one of the things that's really interesting about that, and you said like, oh, that's kind of fun is he, they use wrestlers who are, you know, friends of theirs and in, in, the, you know, WWE, uh, not always, but often. And more often than not, they intersperse, they cut because they've edited together and gotten, they kind of let those wrestlers know, 
hey, this is what happened in the, in the storyline. And then those wrestlers, like, on their phones, send them little promos. And sometimes it's like, it's just like Adam Cole just being like, oh, really? You, Big E, you tried to cheat to win? What are you doing? And it's like 15 seconds. But some people, uh, like, if you're a fan of the wrestler Chad Gable, a.k.a. Shorty G., Chad Gable doesn't get to do stuff on television other than occasionally wrestle. Um, he doesn't get to cut promos and cut loose and do a character work. So throughout the course of this series for Austin's Up, Up Down channel, he's gotten to like do interesting and weird uh, character choices. Um, he's gotten to like branch out and be weird and, and cut promos and have like a reason to do it. And it's really fun to watch because, like, that's not a thing he gets to do uh, uh, outside of, like, these odd storylines. Um, so it's kind of fun to see that. And not everyone does it. You know, it's like, and you know, like, you know, time commitments and all that and the editing. They don't do it for everyone. But uh, it, it adds, not only does it add to the show, it's kind of fun if you're, like, into those people. You, you know, you have a, uh, an affinity for them. Uh, I don't know. Like, there's so much th there's so much talent out there that it is nice to just get a chance to see some people do some stuff, especially the folks that like don't get a chance to shine outside of the you know predicament they've been in. Like, you don't hear from Andrade because well, one, he's suspended right now, but two, because he's with Selena Vega. So he doesn't need to talk because he has an incredible mouthpiece as his business partner who does the talking for him. But Andrade Cien Almas can fucking talk. He cuts a great promo. He does a great job. You just don't get to uh, to hear it. His, uh, and like he's like, you know, still working on his second language, which is English, but, like, got... He was vastly improved over his time in NXT. Uh, so it'd be interesting, you know, it'd be nice to, like, see some of those folks that you don't get to see that much do stuff like that and get to cut loose. I mean, it's one of the reasons, like, obviously, people really liked Southpaw regional wrestling because it was, you know, very of its time, but it was also, like, you got to see wrestlers have fun. Like, uh, the club, those dudes, the OC, like their stuff was so good and it was like totally a different side of them and allowing them to just like have fun and be the kind of people that they're like, they don't get a chance to be. It's kind of neat to see like, uh, when you, when you, when, when people are put in a box and you said, this is what you do. It's always kind of interesting to watch them. Uh, break out of that a little bit, even if it's very temporary, uh, and what and see what people are like. What is possible with people? You know, we like said like John Cena had all the tools except a character that anyone cared about or wanted to see. The prototype wasn't anything. It was a very temporary placeholder for a gimmick for a wrestling character. There, there was nothing to it. It, it wasn't going to be anything. And then suddenly, John Cena is given the opportunity to do something funny backstage and runs with it. And people are like very into it. And then folks are like, okay, maybe we can do something with this. Maybe there's something to this idea you know, we don't, we think he's a good wrestler, but he hasn't really connected with anyone. But this seems like it might be a thing that will make us money. <laughs> you know, it's so like John Cena's big break is doing a freestyle rap dressed as Vanilla Ice on a Halloween episode of SmackDown. You know, like that does more for him than having a very good match with. Uh, uh, with uh, um, 
who did he have a great match? Uh, early on, he had a great match with Kurt Angle, and it was like very important and like for what was going on at the time. Uh, but it didn't translate to the audience being into him. Then came the spinner belt, and the rest is history. Indeed, Ultron. People hate. Oh man, people hate the spinner. Now I will. I will concede that the U.S. title spinner. I don't like the plate at all. So the fact that that U.S. title spins is is I I I'm not super into it, but I'm also not into the belt at all uh, and the design of that of that U.S. belt. So its spinning is kind of moot to me. But yeah, some people really hate the spinner belt, and I think that. Look, here's my thing. No, as soon as you beat John Cena, you change that belt. Edge just changing the plate and making it the R spinner. No, that's not. That to me was that to me was a, a bigger mistake than anything else. Like, yeah, it is. It's a goofy thing. I think that like there have been some goofier belts. I think that uh, I'm. So disappointed in WWE uh, recently with uh, the new version of the Intercontinental title because one, I don't think it's a good belt, and two, the that it feels like they replaced it just because Cody Rhodes brought back the previous version, but that version was classic and great, and so I was kind of frustrated. Uh, and I, yeah, I just don't think this new, I don't think the new version is that good. Uh, but, you know, it's not super important. Those things aren't as important, really. Uh, I think the custom plates in the big titles right now is fine. Um, I think that uh, the Fiend's belt is, isn't as cool as the idea of the uh, his own face stretched over the lantern that he was doing. I think that's way better than the stretched face belt. I don't necessarily love that, but I also I like the idea that Bray Wyatt holds one title and then the Fiend ha holds another. That just plays into the character in a way that I'm super into. I think I'm always going to be into that. I uh, I recorded my next. Uh, bearing the list, I put one out that went out yesterday, but I recorded the, the next two, uh, so that when next week I don't have to worry about making one before I go to Boston. I just did one, um, I did two, uh, so I, I don't have to worry about that because I usually do them on Thursday. A little peek behind the curtain, part the kimono a bit. I often do, um, I often do that uh, the Thursday before, so I have plenty of time to upload it and edit it and watch it and kind of scrap it if it feels like, man, this isn't exactly what I wanted to do. Um, but I uh, I put it all together, uh, and uh, my next one is going to be wrestling themed because I've really only done one wrestling one so far, so I figured I'd do another one. Uh, and that one I'm pretty happy with. I think it turned out pretty good. And the one I did after that is very silly, but I think people will like it. It's a food one because I haven't really done that much food. Basically, I've done... Too much anime, probably. Uh, going from Pokemon starters to this week's... Because let's be... We, we can be honest. My numbers for the Dragon Maid one probably aren't going to be huge. Uh, it's possible that people might tune in who or might find it who are searching for content about Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Uh, which, and if they are, I hope they enjoy my video, which has... You know, no, no information, because all they really want to know is when is season two coming out, and the answer is nobody knows because it's delayed because uh, of the uh, fire at the studio that makes it. Uh, so, you know, but people still want to know like when they're going to get their second season and what's going on with it, which I understand. You know, I get that. People have to just give some patience to it. Uh, just binge all Dragon Ma Finally, says Lord Stockton. Yeah, 
Look, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid has a lot of issues with it. It's not by any means perfect. Uh, some would say that it's a complicated show to recommend. That the caveats to recommend that show are vast. I think the core concept of a dragon be trying to be the best maid that she can be because she has some affinity for a human is interesting. Uh, and then the idea that the reason why this couple isn't working isn't because uh, one of them is a dragon and the other is a human. It's not because they're both female. The issue that Kobayashi has is that Kobayashi does not believe that she is built for being in a loving relationship or that she deserves it. That's the core issue of why they're not together. Like, that's fucking fascinating. And then, and then, there's, uh, there's a, the big boobed blonde dragon that keeps being very inappropriate with a, a young boy that accidentally summons her, whose name is Shota, for fuck's sake. His name is Boy. Come on. Come on. Ooh, it's real not good. It's just real not good. Uh, that's not good. Uh, Saikawa being into um, Kana is not bad. I, 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 need, I always wanted to make sure I stress that. Because I think that, like, sometimes people thought that I was, like, mad about that relationship or that interest that that character had. And that's not what I'm mad about. It's just that it shouldn't be presented in this way. Um, well, one, I don't ever want to see Twister used as a, as a device in any media ever again. No one owns Twister anymore. It is a, it is a dated, terrible, unnecessary uh, device, plot device, to push people together but certainly characters of that age like nah i'm just not into it i don't need to see i don't we don't need to be presented with that it just feels weird uh, not into that part of the show but overall dragon maid has some really interesting stuff and then uh this you know this like a human man who is like has his work friend they're both otaku and he appreciates that and he finds out that the woman living with his co-worker and friend is a dragon. And he's like, okay. And then they're like, hey, there's this other dragon. Uh, he's basically a shut-in like you, only instead of being a video game playing neat, he's a dragon who got cursed because he wanted to spend all his time uh, protecting his treasure and never left his cave. He barely got out, but now he's kind of out and about. Do you think it'd be okay if you lived together? And he was just like, yeah, all right, sure. That sounds cool. I'm going to make a, having a lasting deep relationship with this uh, vampire man, or not vampire, sorry, dragon man who dresses like a British butler uh, and is inspired, his dress is inspired by the guy from Black Butler, like, clearly, but also has been stated. It's just like, okay. It's just a weird, weird show that I, that is way better than it should be. And also, we've talked about this before. You, you, sh you, you all know my, my feelings on, um, uh, on modern OVAs. It's got a really good OVA that like furthers what's going on in the story and, like, is worth watching? Very strange. Uh, yeah, I think that it's, like, a fun, a fun show. I would recommend it. Um, as I said, it's got caveats, but everything does. Um, the, as you know, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, when I'm in Boston, I will be doing, uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club live at 
PAX, the first ever live edition of Pat Bear's Anime Club, where we will uh, be talking about shows and uh, uh, myself and, and my guests. And uh, I picked a few pieces to kind of go through and talk about that are basically like uh, one of the, the elements of the show is we're going to be answering the question, is there are there caveats to recommending this piece of material? And I, I hope I can convey that, that, but also convey to you, these are not like deal breakers. Like, they're just like, hey, if you're going to watch this, here's some things to be, to know about. Here's some things to be aware about. They might color your information or your expectations. They are not to say that these are not worthwhile endeavors, but if you are sensitive to these things, you should know about them. It's answering the question, is there a Manetta? And now Manetta could be a character like Manetta uh, from uh, My Hero Academia, who is just awful and played for laughs. This is an awful person. Um, I mean, even the most recent episode, he's gross uh, several times. And then characters react to him being gross. And that's funny. And you're like, I guess it is. I get. I don't know if that is funny. I think that's just lame. I wish that wasn't happening right now. Um, but it also could be situations like if I'm going to tell you about Fire Force, which I think is a great shounen, uh, full of awesome action. I think the animation is really cool. I think the fight scenes are really great. I think the characters are really interesting. But one of the characters, uh, what her like, one of her like character traits is that she is very uh, clumsy and unlucky in ways that lead to her clothes coming off and her being in awkward situations with that which is definitely played to undercut her being like kind of condescending and mean to characters and then weird things happen and it's not great at all and so you're like well this happens there's a Manetta like it might affect some people more than others uh, I know that it's a it was a kind of a deal breaker for a friend of mine who was just like just really tired of be of shown and being so do like she's just like either they're presented as just damsels to be rescued of course the girl the character is as well um or they're not there at all and it's frustrating uh and it's like yeah you're not wrong I mean, there's not a really standout, kick-ass, cool lady in uh, in Hunter Hunter until Bisky, and that's fucking that's a, a many many. You have to watch Hunter Hunter for an incredibly long time before you get get to meet Bisky, who is just awesome. Uh it's a, you have to really, really watch that show to have any female character that has any significance. Uh, I guess the, the the cooking hunter, the explorer hunter, cooking hunter, the, the exam is pretty cool, but she's not like a character in the show. She doesn't really in the arc. She's not really there. It's not, she's not that part of the story, uh, which, is, which is frustrating. Um, but as I said, none of these are like, these aren't, I'm not setting these up as deal breakers or these are things to like say like, well, you can't watch this because like, it's just like, eh, I want people to be aware. Um, it is, uh, it is just like, you know, like, I think that it. I don't think that Demon Slayer is particularly great, but I know a lot of people that like Demon Slayer. And every once in a while... Uh, not Demon Slayer, sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, a were or a werewolf. A were. I don't think that I'm 
I don't think any show that I'm going to be talking about in my panel will involve a werewolf. So I didn't mean Demon Slayer. Uh, I meant Goblin Slayer. Goblin Slayer and Demon Slayer are two very different shows. So don't don't get that twisted. Um, Demon Slayer, I think, is fantastic. It, it's a little slow, and I think it just gets incredible, and it's very fun and enjoyable. Um, whereas Goblin Slayer, there's some very interesting elements to Goblin Slayer. I think it's an interesting show. Um, but you have to be aware that, like, it's fucking really... The first episode is really rough. The first episode is on purpose very rough because it is trying to convey that, oh, this is a world where people are like, yeah, goblins, you know, that, that's annoying. Hey, but also the demon king might be coming. The end of the world might be happening. So we're not really focusing on goblins, but that's a mistake because goblins are, are like, can fuck things up. So that first episode is rough. And in fact, eventually, I think like after like a week of people being like, whoa, what the fuck? Uh, Crunchyroll like put a like disclaimer at the beginning of the episode, just being like, hey, content warning. This shit gets rough. And the rest of the series isn't as rough as that episode. Um, and as I said, there's something interesting about a guy who is just like focused on doing dangerous work like that but like not flashy it's not interesting people aren't like uh people aren't like uh they think he's gross yeah i mean it's not a great show but i will say that like but that's the thing where like i wouldn't say hey don't watch it i would say hey that first episode not great but then there's stuff like um uh, well, you love goblins. Well, you should watch, uh, you should watch that time I got reincarnated as a slime because there are a lot of goblins and hobgoblins in that that are nice and fun, fun folks. So you should check out, uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, which is also just like fun. Basically any, uh, race of creatures, like there are good ones for them and like stuff to like about it. Uh, silly dwarves and cool demons and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, but yeah, there's some fun goblins in that one. Uh, Mother's Basement did a good episode on it, and the one thing he points out, the specific scene in episode one, is positioned pretty sexualized way. Yes, it is, the hollow. Um, it, is, uh, it is... There's a lot of shock value in that first episode, and as I said, it's... Um, after watching the the whole thing uh, or the the show it makes sense in that it is attempting to really um like put a fine point on uh the series and and how like uh folks are overlooking this big issue but it's it's certainly devastating uh and what some people consider an obsession which certainly is uh, that this young man couldn't do anything and watch this tragedy happen and no one helped him. Uh, and he is broken. I mean, the Goblin Slayer is a broken man. There, He's barely a character. His character is how broken he is. And so there's a lot of interesting things happening in, in that show. And also the fact that, like, characters don't really have names. They have, like, what people call them. So, like... Uh, the elf is calling him Orkblorg or something like that, and one other has another name for him. Uh, and, like, they don't really have names. And then they're like, oh, you mean Goblin Slayer? And you're like, yes. Um, but because uh, there wasn't that, like, information out there about people, like, you didn't get that information saying, like, hey, just so you know, first episode is fucked. It is, uh, it is sometimes hard to, uh, to get past that. Um, as I said, uh, a show this season that I gave up on is Centon Academy. I think, uh, 
Sentai Academy is an interesting show. I think the concept is really fun, but the show they chose to make, I just don't want to watch. Uh, I'm having trouble getting... Uh, uh, you can see here, I've got a little connector here for the side. Uh, I'm having a little trouble getting the other one in on the other side. So I'm going to maybe try to trim it a little bit here just with my... There, and we'll see if I can get that going in there. But yeah, I'm a little trouble getting that in as I'm talking. Um... So Seton Academy, I think it's a fun idea of the idea of like a school where all these anthropomorphized uh, animals and two humans go and you're watching this pack of kind of random characters come together in the cooking club and how they interact and and all that. Like there's there's some stuff about that that I think is pretty interesting, but hey, Lord Crashington. Um, the jokes are bad, and I'm not interested in them. Uh, obviously, the the idea that the male characters are all going to just be like, oh, this is a uh, the animal, like this is the wolf, and it's just a wolf wearing a school uniform on its back legs, just walking around. That's what they're going to do there. But if you're a female... You basically look like a human girl, uh, but you have like some fur and maybe a tail and ear in and, and the ears of your animal. Um, and that is frustrating uh, because not all of the female characters are sexualized, but a lot of the jokes are related to that. And it's just like, I don't want to, I don't want to watch this anymore. Uh, yes, I, I'm sure there are people that like, love it and maybe there's a version of that show that i would be interested in and enjoy watching but it's not the one that's being presented uh because like look uh, i saw some character art for later in the season and they just introduced a honey badger and honey badgers besides uh emitting a uh a, 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 like a poison kind of stink cloud like a skunk honey badgers also uh the old honey badger don't care is mainly their defense is so high and their skin is so tough and their fur is so tough that they can, like, really take an attack. So they got this tiny little honey badger. She's, like, this big. And, like, lions are punching her. And she's just like, what? Uh, I don't know. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a funny idea. That's kind of fun. But, like, yeah. It's like, all right, that's kind of fun. Like, there's stuff in it that I'm like, oh, I would like this show. But then also, they're like, this mole rat uh, thinks that people wearing clothes is perverted. Because uh, she's a naked mole rat. Get it? So she's going to be in her underwear all the time. Oh, okay, that's a joke, I guess. Uh, this character is uh, females of this species of animal have a in reality have uh, a piece of uh, a body part that makes it look like they have a penis because that is so that predators are confused about their gender so we got this character who thought she was a boy uh and now she's like trying to be feminine and girly and you're like okay i don't think you're as equipped to, to to do this in any way that isn't gonna be shitty and you're like all right. And then you're like, this sloth keeps trying to do stuff because she wants to be part of the team and she keeps just falling over and dying because sloths can't really do anything. And I'm like, and she's got like little literal moss growing at her head. I'm like, all right, that's pretty funny. It is a dumb recurring joke. Uh, they keep going back to the well on over and over again. All right, you got me. That's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just, uh, I wish the jokes were uh, more, I wish that one, either everyone just looked the same. Uh, not really. I mean, there's there's implied like um, mating is certainly a thing that's referenced a bunch. Uh, and it is implied that the fox girl, who is very small, and the human guy are mates. That's certainly implied. Uh, it's mostly just like, it's a high school romp, but they're, f like, I don't know. 
No, not really. There's not a lot of like that kind of nudity or, or that kind of suggested nudity there. Mostly it's just like kind of silly one note gags that are or that are just like it basically it's it's not it's not funny enough to justify how not f how like goofy it is. Like it there is a reality where this show is very funny and very like and you're like, oh, that's a smart gag, and oh, that's a cool thing. It's just not that funny or that interesting. Uh, and it's a shame because I think the premise is very cool. I love the idea of also the human guy, like one of his traits is that he's very knowledgeable animals, but he hates them. And it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting because he solves a lot of his problems by knowing facts. Like he shuts down this zebra that's making trouble for them for being like, you're not a cool horse. You're a zebra. You have more in common with donkeys than horses. Uh, and really embarrasses her with his knowledge about about that. Like, that's a thing that happens a couple times in the show. It's like, all right, there's, there's some stuff here that's kind of interesting. But for the most part, it is uh, just kind of bland. And I was just like, I just don't... Even though this season right now is not that strong... There aren't that many great shows this season. I'm not going to waste my time with something that, like, even if it wasn't super interesting, if there was, like, you know, for the stream, for conversation, like, I like having things to be able to talk about on stream. So it's, it's kind of nice sometimes to have things to chat about. I do look for things that I can talk to you all about while I'm building. Um, but even for that, I was like, no, it's just not, not worth it. Um... So, you know, this can be a bummer. All right, so it's going to go in here. You can see that come up. And then B12. I'm doing one of these, and then we'll do the other one next. Uh, this is part of the shoulder. Or these are the, the mounts on the back here, the shields. can be weaponized. All right, so we'll build the other one of that. And we do have a sticker to put on this, which we'll do soon. Uh, look at this from inside the company. Do you think the writers are being stifled? The person who promoted the idea to stop pushing his ideas? I just, so I think that it is a fun premise, but the show, what the show wanted to do is not what I'm interested in watching. And this happens, right? And sometimes that's, oh, uh, well, they just made a choice and I don't really like their choice and okay, we'll just whatever. And sometimes it's like, oh, I really liked what this could have been. Like, um, the example I often use is there exists a world a version of reality, a universe, a multiverse, where Attack on Titan is about the la uh, a bunch of humans using technology. Oh, who is Pat Bear to this company? I, I actually don't know what you're asking there. Um... Uh, so the example I was using there is uh, um, the uh, um, okay. So uh, oh, all right, yeah, uh, yes, that's okay. That's what I'm saying. So uh, that's what you meant. Yes, they have a demographic. So it's mostly that like oh, their premise of this school with anthropomorphized animals uh, and a human interacting. Uh, and then some jokes happen, and it's funny and off the cuff. There, that that's what they presented. I had in my idea what that might be, and it's not exactly what they're selling. And sometimes that's on me for my expectations, and sometimes that's on them for maybe not necessarily nailing it or doing a good job. But also, there, like I said, there definitely out exists the possibility, like a good possibility, that there are people who are like, Sentai Academy is my favorite show this season. Uh, the thing I would say is, um, even though I think there's, there's, as it goes on, it's less and less. Attack on Titan, right? 
the premise that was presented of there are these giant beasts, these humanoid looking beasts, these titans are wrecking havoc and the last of humanity are using technology and determination and 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 tactics uh group tactics to do their best to push back the tide that's an interesting show one of which that i was like pretty dang uh interested in and checking out uh and i watched it and enjoy it. now actually what the show is about is that but also there are a few people out there that can turn into titans and most of the show is actually about that. that the Unraveling the mysteries of how this happened and who these people are and what these special abilities are that they have and, and all of that and how they interact and all of that and the, the other people that can do this and what side are they on and all this other stuff. Um, and that is kind of interesting. And there are people that are like, Oh shit! That dude turns into a titan, and now he's fighting the titans. This is my jam, and I'm happy for people that like that. Me, once it became clear that it was more about that part of the show, I was less interested in what it was, and that's on me to be like, oh, that this is what the show was was going to be about this whole time. Uh, I'm I'm not super into that. I wish it wasn't that show. Um. And yeah, and like, and I know, and I, and I'm trying to be aware of it, like, okay, that's not, that's not exactly what I would have liked to have watched. Uh, it would have been cool if it was, in my opinion, maybe it wouldn't have gone anywhere. Maybe it would have been a boring show uh, if it was just about those battles and it wasn't, it didn't grow and change and became, become, you know, about this weird four-legged titan that stores stuff showing up and who's this and who's that and oh this person bit this person and now has this a power and you're like okay like I don't know I, I think I'm like less interested in the show than I was previously uh, but I know people who are like still on board and still into it um, uh, I was pleasantly surprised by Dr. Stone last year um, because Dr. Stone presents itself one way and then it's really not about that. Um, it seemed like it might be a very shonen show of like, oh, these characters wake up after a uh, catastrophic event. Um, they're going to rebuild society using science. They're going to figure this stuff out. These three characters are going to like go about and like uh, bring back the old ways and like figure things out with whatever and then all but it's not about that it is about that but it's also about this w upcoming war between them and a society that basically decided like no we're not going to like do science and go back to the way things were we're going to make sure that doesn't happen and stop you from making that happen uh, and it's a race to see like who comes out on top in that which is like a different story uh, and then also focusing on these these this generation or this this village that are the descendants of survivors basically uh, and that's like interesting and it, I think a good show I think it ends up being a, a good program and I'm glad that I stuck with Dr. Stone but it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be uh, when I first heard about the show. And the first couple episodes led me to believe this is what the show is going to be about. Because it very clearly became about this village of people and Senku trying to uh, use his influence to get what he needs from them. And I was like, oh, this is different. Uh, as I said, I still enjoyed it. I still think it ended up being a good piece of entertainment. But it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. All right, got one of our backpack pieces done. Uh, and, you know, hey, sometimes things are like that. Like, uh, they surprise you in ways that are great. Uh, and I'm all up for that. Um, and then some shows are just incredibly comforting and don't do anything to, to shock you or change your mind. Um, we'll be talking about one of those shows uh, after our pause for the cause, which we'll be doing in a moment or two. 
Uh, I like the idea of using science to better life for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, so the hollow, like, the, it seems like that show was setting up these three friends are going to, you know, use the the, uh, the knowledge that one of them has, the determination and, and, and force of will to fix what went wrong and, and reverse the petrification process and bring back the old uh, way that they were used to. Uh, and go on like wacky adventures with science. That's what it seemed like the show was going to be, but instead it's preparing for this war. Science versus athletic talent and bloodlust. And I was like, oh, that's a different show. Okay. Uh, yes. Um. And I think that, like, yeah, I think there's definitely room for shows that are that are to get to be surprised in. Anyway, uh, so we are going to take a pause for the cause, folks. Uh, if you're new to the channel, what does that mean? It just means that for like five minutes, I'm going to stop building, stop assembly, and I'm going to tell you ways that if you like, you can support the channel. You are under no obligation to do that, being in the chat, watching, uh that's awesome, and I really appreciate it. But for the next couple of minutes, oh, and we just got subscribed three months, uh, one month streak. We're going to hit the old uh, applause there. Uh, thank you so much, uh, R for uh, Air, for uh, subscribing there on a one month streak using your Twitch Prime coin. Appreciate that so much. If you're currently subscribed, you can throw the Bear Cave Lego. Hi, Arista fan. Happy to have you here, as always. But yeah, um, Using your Twitch Prime coin, because you linked your Amazon with Twitch, uh, using cash money, these are ways you can subscribe. You get some cool emotes, and uh, I appreciate that very much. Uh, as I said, this will take like five, six minutes, and then we'll get back to building, but I do, you know, I got to tell you about cool ways you can support the channel if you're interested in doing that. Uh, you're under no obligation to do that. Uh, bits and coins, always appreciated. Gifting subs. If you want to gift someone a sub, you could do that, and that is another way to... Uh, support the stream. Uh, let people know. Uh, uh, I love it in the bear cave. I appreciate that. Dirty's here. Hi, Dirty. Um, Harold, have a great night. I'll see you this weekend, I'm sure, uh, uh, on the old streams. If not, I'll see you soon. Uh, in a week, in person. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to just quickly go some ways. Bits and coins, gifting subs, becoming a subscriber. These are easy ways to support the channel. Um, you're under no obligation to do any of the things I'm about to talk about. But if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to. Uh, you know, um, let's see. Uh, I have a Patreon. You can join my Patreon if you'd like. You're under no obligation to do that. But I have a Patreon. And I thought I would mention that. I'm building three nights a week because of the support of that Patreon. and unlocked the ability for me to do Mondays, which I'm very grateful for. Um, I have uh, donation pages that you can join in if that's something you'd like to do. Um, this kit was bought off my Amazon wish list and the kit I'm building next was also bought off my Amazon wish list and I'm going to link that and I'll talk about that very briefly a couple things in there oh we just got a uh, a new subscription there as well um thank you so much uh, uh but just gifted us a, a sub to Alfred thank you so much let's throw the uh, applause in there thank you so much I really appreciate that uh but and Ives uh, for gifting that sub, uh, that's awesome, um, but yeah, uh, thank you so much, and Alfred, enjoy your emotes, and being a subscriber, and not seeing ads when you get into a stream, um, so yeah, I have a wish list, of course, if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, you can check this all out on my, uh, on my page to see what's going on there, but I've got, uh, a bunch of different stuff, if you buy it on the, if from my wish list, it gets sent to me, I build it on stream, um, uh, various things here, uh, for you to, to buy and that I'll build. Um, and, uh, I always appreciate it. Uh, I don't think we have anything coming off the wish list now, Chris, the next thing we do. And then I have a backlog of stuff that I buy, um, cause everything that I get through Patreon and through, um, Twitch goes into buying kits and equipment. That's, uh, that's the deal. Um, uh, I also have, uh, you could buy a gift card from USA Gundam store and then send me that, uh, as another option if you don't want to use Amazon, because I get it, I understand. 
Um, I'll go through these pretty quick here. Oh, my Patreon. Uh, I just mentioned. Uh, I mentioned donations. I did all that. Uh, I have a Discord. I post photos of stuff I work on. Uh, you can post in there. It's a quiet little uh, Discord of people posting stuff they're working on. Ultron just posted some stuff today, which is cool. Um, but yeah, the the uh, uh, Bill the Bear Discord. It's a pretty chill place. Like I said, pretty uh, relaxed. Um, I made some videos, as I said, on Monday, I made a video that I broke down and talked about, uh, uh, the, the results of the anime awards, Country Rules anime awards, which is this past weekend. And today or yesterday, I should say, I posted a new bearing the list, which is my weekly ranking series. And I ranked the characters in Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid and let you know who's S rank and who's bottom of the barrel uh and i really enjoy doing this so um let's see uh talk about i'm gonna drink from my water bottle here we're gonna get back into continuing to work on our kit got about an hour left of the build stream there oh that's good um but yeah uh all right, obviously tonight we talked a lot about anime, but let's talk about current anime. So, um, even though the show's on Friday, I didn't, up until recently, I didn't watch Friday's episode of Science Fell in Love, so I tried to prove it. Uh, the first half was interesting because it focused on some of the other characters. Uh, if you haven't seen uh, the show, uh, I think it's pretty funny. It is a romantic comedy show about a college uh, science club uh, that is uh, two of the people are trying to scientifically prove if they are in love with one another uh, because they need scientific evidence of that. And so that's basically the premise of the show. Uh, spoiler alert, not a spoiler at all. They're definitely in love with each other. They just don't have any good way of uh, acknowledging that or understanding it. So they're trying to use the scientific method to make it happen. Which is kind of fun. It's a fun show. We get to see some of the minor characters interact um, and kind of get a better sense of what their relationship is like. And that was kind of cool. Because we don't really get to see that too much in the show. Uh, and how they feel about one another. And then we got teased with next week's episode, or which is going to be this Friday. I should say, because this was last Friday's episode. This coming episode will be uh, them, like, presenting some of their findings. Uh, but there's a new plot twist of a uh, student who used to be in the, in the science club, but left it because she graduated, and she's a failed manga artist. But maybe there's more to her than what we're seeing. I don't know. So I don't know. Basically, science fell in love, so I tried to prove it. It's a fun romantic comedy. I'm still engaged with it. I'm still interested in with it. Um, it's still a ridiculous show. Uh, but I do think that it, it is a fun premise. Uh, and so, yeah, I would recommend it. Um, Black Clover. Look. It was one of those Black Clover episodes that I'm always ranting and raving about. Uh, Asta's on trial for being a demon, which he's not. They're going to try to blame him for everything that happened to the kingdom, but it's not his fault. But the reality that it is that a bunch of dead elves took over a bunch of the Magic Knight's bodies, that's not a good reality. Uh, that doesn't work... Um, uh, at all. Uh, so they're like, well, we're just going to blame this guy that's, that's got a demon inside of him. Um, but the Black Bulls come to the rescue. There's a bunch of little speeches. Uh, the shitty dude who's not that shitty is still around. I thought for sure he was going to take off. He wasn't going to be a permanent member of the crew, but he's he's there, and that was kind of fun. Uh, there's, yeah, there's just like good little bits from everybody, and then they also... Uh, decide that um, uh, Nero, who up until this point was just a bird, but she was really a person that was pretending to be, that was trapped in a bird body, 
Uh, she's now a black bull. They've accepted her in there. And uh, Magna, who is a, a very goofy character that I, I that I do have a soft spot for, is a goofy fire boy, uh, says, Hey, I heard you've been uh, a badass... Uh, I've heard you've been a badass bird for 500 years. That's pretty cool. Or that's pretty awesome. And I was just like, that's such a, it's one of those things where like, that's such a nonsense line. Like the line, hey, I've heard you've been a kick-ass bird for 500 years. But it's accurate. She has been a cool bird this whole time. And he would think that that's awesome. Uh, it was just very fun. Uh... Just like a cool bunch of those characters like interacting and having a good time. And now I guess the whole thing is that they're going to be traveling around in the mobile version of their house because of Henry's magic. And they're going to investigate demons. Which is... Okay. Sure. Sure. Uh, yeah, overall, it was a fun episode good character stuff. Interesting to see what comes of it. Uh, it's Scooby-Doo. Yeah, Lord Stockton, now we're in the investigating phase, which is just going to be all those characters on the road. I'm wondering if they're going to split up at any point, because there are... One of the things they would do is they would go, like, out on missions or whatever, and you'd focus on a couple characters, but now they're all together, and I don't know how that's going to work, because like I said... Uh, the dude that does trap magic is also now there. And I thought for sure he was going to take off. So I was pretty surprised. And now because they're taking the base with them, that means Henry's there. And I was like, because he really can't leave the base. Uh, and I was like, okay, what's, what are, what are we doing here? Uh, oh, you know what I, what I did? I forgot the stickers. I got these stickers. I'm so focused on, on working on this kit that I forgot to put stickers on the sides here. Our last two stickers. Because I, I was excited about building this lance. Anyway, it was a good episode of Black Clover. Um, and now, I uh, normally, I would talk about a show that came out today. But I can't talk about that. Um, because, uh, apparently, some of the animation that is done by... Uh, that is done for Infinite Dendogram is... Uh, some of that, some of their uh, digital animation, or not digital, the computer stuff, is done by a Chinese company, and so they uh, took a week off. Basically, I think they're showing a best of on television. Uh, and uh, there are a few shows that are that are you know that that outsource some of their work to China, and this is one of like I think like three shows. I'm gonna cough a little. <clears throat> this is like one of three shows that is dealing with that uh, delay. I believe um, the uh, I forget which other shows, but there are a couple other shows that are dealing with this issue as well. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if we, we see more shows that, that have delays because of that. Um, all right, there's our stickers here on the on our shield subarms, our subarm shields. Uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. So that show has been delayed for a week, so I can't really talk. I can't talk about the episode that was supposed to come out. And then, uh, but I can tell you about Boofery. And I posted about Boofery on uh, on my on my Twitter, and he got some traction, which was good. So people like that hadn't heard about the show, um, because at this point I can say it's kind of it's odd. It is it is not an isekai, but it isn't. An isekai. It's not a slice of life, but it is a slice of life. It's not an action show, but it is an action show. It's just... It's comfort in that, like, there's not really stakes, and it's fun, lively characters interacting, and it's fun, but it's not, like, heavy... Because they're inside a video game. Uh, and this last episode, nothing really happened, but a bunch of small little things happened. Like, the dude in the guild got a new armor that looks legitimately fucking awesome and scary. Uh, 
It's become a guild full of broken meta characters. Yes, Dirty. Like, the uh, the Hammer Sisters are in there finally. I saw them in, like, the, you know, the opening credits, and I was like, oh, I can't wait for these characters to show up. I love, I love, love, love the idea of uh, the, uh, this idea of they maxed out their uh, strength, and now they're, like, trying to get a few abilities that will compensate for that and looks like they're they're gonna get some but i love the idea that they're just like oh yeah we're we're the hammer sisters and then they got the basically they got the ability to dual wield so each of them can hold two hammers and that's just nonsense and then a bunch of small little things happen they're kind of exploring things and everyone is basically overpowered in their own way including the dude who got new armor which is just going to allow him to be uh even tougher but he's a shield he's a shield bearer he's supposed to be defensive but now he's an offensive shield bearer which is just that's weird there's the the magic person that can do all this other stuff that like she now can hold all these other kinds of magic uh the only character in the guild that isn't like abnormal uh in their build is the uh the guild like uh crafter but who knows i'm sure she's gonna have some weird thing at some point but it's it's really just pleasant and fun it's like a very chill uh show that i can't help but really love uh there's a montage song that's played, I think, now like three or four times in the season, which is probably too many, but it sounds like Persona 4 music, so I'm on board. It's just like, uh, it's just a comforting, very relaxed, which why it feels like Slice of Life, because it's like, oh, these are fun things that are happening. It's it, it feels a little meandering, like it looks like this other guild that has been paying attention to what's going on is probably eventually going to have to like get involved and it's like okay but like it still doesn't kind of matter because uh i mean it, it doesn't matter because it is just a video game uh and the reason the, the way they're trying to play it up as like you know like oh we should care about the stakes here is just like oh there's just people that want to have fun together and have a good time uh but yeah, I think it's like very chill and fun. And look, there's only one great show this season, right? There's one great show. Isaacin is great. Uh, but as of the end of last year, wasn't even, or not the end of last year, uh, the end of January, wasn't even the top 20 polled in Japan, which is a bummer. Like, I understand that it's very specific to art and artists, but I was hoping more people were going to watch it. Uh, cause I think it's really good. Uh, but yeah, Isaacin is clearly the best show. I think Boofree is fun. Uh, if I was going to talk about, let's see, uh, I think Science Fell in Love is a good show. I, I would recommend that. Welcome to Demon School, Irumakun is cute. It's just a very cute anime. Uh, I do think that it suffers by being double length, but overall I'm pretty psyched about it. Uh, Inspector is weird. Inspector is a weird show that, like, I'm constantly surprised by, but I think is, like, kind of cool. And, I mean, if you loved Laid Back Camp, Room Camp is fun, but you could also just wait for all of Room Camp be to be over and just watch it all at once. And I think you would have... Not just as much fun but you would have a lot of fun uh with with room camp if you uh if you just waited for all to be over and watch it because it's only three minute episodes so overall it's kind of a weak season uh i i was you know i'm, I'm hoping that uh well i already know that april stuff there's going to be some good stuff in april because we've got some we got some weird isekai coming. We've got some, uh, uh, some uh, good uh, love story stuff. Some good like romantic comedy shows coming. Like there's things coming next season that I am interested in. Uh, 
It's just that there's not like uh, nothing, all, not a whole lot going on right now. All right. So what you could do is, if you wanted, you could have this. So you could have the lance attached to these like arm things, but I'd rather just have them out because I think they just look cool. And so why not just have them out? And we'll just do that. Uh, but this is our kit, y'all. This is the Camaris. Uh, Vidar high grade. Uh, overall, I think the arm stickers are bad. These arm stickers are that like full body arm sticker pieces. I think are bad. Uh, um, but I think that it is a sharp looking kit and interesting, and I'm happy I did it. Uh, Lord Crashington just uh, put in 600 points, uh, chat points. So we'll do. Use the soundboard there. Uh, the Hollow asks, would you describe yourself as an Issa guy? The answer is yes. Look, do I like more, do I like the weirder Isekai that have come out in response to the modern Isekai? Yes. A hundred percent. I'm more interested in the, like, didn't I say to my, my abilities average the next life, which was a comedy taking place in an Isekai. That was really interesting to me. Uh, I think that time I got reincarnated as slime is a very, is the best modern guy that exists. Uh, I, I much prefer that kind of show. I think so I'm a spider. So what is a really interesting idea. And I'm looking forward to watching that, um, much more than I'm interested in the other modern is a guy, uh, like that are, I'm in a video game, but I, but it's not a video game, but to me, it feels like the video game I used to play. Uh, I'm not as interested in those modern takes of the uh, undefeated male character in his harem. It's a fun genre that gets too much hate. Well, the hollow, like I said, I, I like the ones that like got weird because too many of them are, are, uh, are just... Uh, overpowered MCs surrounded by ladies. That is the genre now. That is the modern take on the genre. So I do like the ones that are like, we're not that. We went we went weird with it. Um, because I'm sick of that one, uh, uh, I forget the name of there's like, or Slow March, uh, or De Death March, uh, Demon Lord Retry, uh, how not to summon a demon lord? Uh, the high school prodigies was a group one, but still was a traditional isekai. Like I'd much rather have more ascendance of bookworms uh, than uh, I'm a dude. Check out all these ladies. Um, wise man's grandchild is just a fucking. There's nothing. The only thing, only thing that was kind of interesting about Wise Band's grandchild was that the main dude murdered someone very early on in the show, and I was like, "Oh, are there going to be consequences? Is this going to be interesting?" No, there weren't really consequences. He just got more and more overpowered as the show went on. Uh, like, yeah, I'm just kind of. I watch them. I think some of them can be interesting, uh, but for the most part. It is uh, the the MC ness of it, the the that the kind of like unstoppable main character. I'm getting myself a harem ness of it is a bummer, um, which is why, like I said, I like the weirder ones. I'm taking a photo here. Gonna take a photo of my Kamaris, and then I'm we'll start our next kit for the, what's left in the stream. Because the Camaris is done! Pop these hands off here. And I'll put this away. This will go into storage for now. Just pop these off the back. Yeah, we did it. Alright, that kit is done -zo. Ship time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, 
there are parts of the genre that I, I, I like very much, or the subgenre, the idea. I think group ones often can be good because they, they give you more to play with and more interactions. Uh, you know, as much as I talk shit about, uh, with, because it deserves the shit that I was talking about, uh, as much as I talk shit about, um, uh, what do you got? Oh, um, uh, Rising the Shield Hero, at least Rising the Shield Hero, is playing with the idea of uh, a world where a bunch of people have decided through various shenanigans, uh, just putting it lightly, uh, that they hate the dude. They hate this dude that's coming to save them. Like, that's interesting. You know, Overlord is interesting because it's the, he's the antagonist. Uh, which, you know, it's played kind of lightly for a while and then gets heated up as it goes uh, to the point where eventually it's just like, oh, wait, this guy sucks. Like the last season, last half season, you're like, oh, yeah, we definitely are supposed to think that this guy is the worst. Interesting. Uh, all right, so I'm looking up the name of this thing. This is a perfume... Uh, perfume, perfume, Yuda is the name of the ship for the Kuja Pirates. Perfume, perfume, Yuda. Because of the the snakes that are on the front are Yuda. I started watching Carol on Tuesday and we're looking so far. Oh yeah, Lashbrook. Carol on Tuesday is, is great. I mean that's definitely a you know different from the kind of shows we're talking about here, but but a great show. Uh, okay, so uh, if you haven't seen a one piece kit be built before these ships, um. There's not a lot to them, right? We got four sheets here, and one sheet is just the water. Um, so we, they're kind of small. They're really great on a desk. I would say these are really fun, like, you know, if, if you're, like, trying to put something like a little knick-knack, that, that kind of thing. I think that that's, these are great kits for that. Um, but there's some issues with these kit. Namely, this kit is so dependent on stickers. All these kits are, right? So, like, look at this. Look at how many stickers I have on this. And then I have some water decals here. Uh, water transfers that, that will go on the ship. Uh, on the mast there, which is fine. But yeah, we got a lot of stickers we're going to have to put on here. Um, and some of them are the, are the bendy ones. But like, basically, all the detail is in the stickers. Which it makes sense, for, especially for the price point. But is tedious these are kits are a little tedious but they are but the i think the end result makes it worth the amount of work that you're putting into um so i do think that they end up being worth it but they are sometimes pretty frustrating because it feels like you're putting like so much effort in sticker work to uh to put this together uh, but as i said I still think it turns out pretty great. Uh, Lord Crash says the fire, the PS4 Fire Pro Wrestling World Deluxe Edition is going to be twenty-seven dollars tomorrow. I grab that. Heck yeah! Um, overall, I really like Fire Pro Wrestling. I think it's a quality game. Um, I'm not good at it. Uh, it's it, but I think that like it's fun and it's it's nice to have like, you know, it's hey, does it have its quirks? Of course it does. It's not perfect, but it is fun to have a fun to play wrestling game uh that you know certainly yeah has has its issues but it's still an enjoyable experience all right um every time i prep for the stream and i want to do some of those videos and i have to record videos uh it takes me forever to remember how to get characters from the uh uh workshop because you find them, and that's easy, and you download them, and that's pretty much instantaneous, and then they're there. But then you have to, like, go in and go into a retired thing and create a thing. It's like the steps necessary for that are, uh, I would say, convoluted. Convoluted is the nice way of saying that. But I I always have to sit there and stare at it for a while and be like, now what do I do? And how do I do this part? And how does this work? Uh, it's less than it. It could be way more intuitive. All right, so uh, 
hey, you're going to hear this right now, and you're going to hear this multiple times. Time to find the sticker that I need. Number 23. Um, as we go, it will be easier because I will run out of stickers to do. But a lot of this kit is just me slowly applying stickers, uh, trying to nail it, and then being okay with it not being perfect if it's not perfect. But I think this is going to be a cool looking kit, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, that goes there. And it's number eight. Uh, and then also, the last time I did one of these, I was like going along and then realized I had like missed some stickers and had to go back, which so I will be attempt I will definitely be double checking and triple checking and quadruple checking as I go. Uh, all right, so this goes over the. So yeah, so this is Boa Hancock of the Utah Pirates. Uh, her deal with the world government. Every woman on uh, the island they live on is considered a pirate or Utah pirate uh, or Cuda pirate. Sorry, Cuda pirates. The Utah is the name of this snake. So I apologize for that. I'm trying to remember the names of things as I'm. Applying stickers here. Uh, this is, of course, one piece. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Kuja. Kuja, that's what it is. The kanji for Kuja. It's Kuja, Yuda. Those are the words. It's the perfume Yuda. I haven't been watching One Piece. I'm letting a bunch of episodes come through, and then I'll go back. I know that uh, Zoro just got to do some cool shit, messing with some gamblers. Uh, I don't know what that what's going to come of that. As I said, I didn't watch the episode, but the whole like in prison thing just didn't have any interest. I didn't have any interest in that, so I was like, meh. I'm not gonna watch for a while. I'll uh, I'll get caught up when it starts uh, picking up steam. I think I think that's what I'll do. All right. So yeah, we're just uh, applying stickers, having a great old time here. Putting stickers where they need to be stuck. Um, we got a little time left in the stream. If there's anything y'all want to chat about tonight, let me know. Uh, let's see. What I don't know. Plans. Uh, I got tech work to do tomorrow. So I'll be doing that tomorrow. And, uh, uh, so right now I'm just prepping, you know, working here tonight. And then I have, uh, Work tomorrow, I have a thing during the day, and then I'm working at the theater that I uh, work at a lot. Uh, oh, wait, was that? That's supposed to be 52? What? Why does it say 51? Mm. That says 52, and that says 51. Is it because there's an inside one as well? That's side. Hmm. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it now. It's a corner. They just didn't indicate the corner that well in a way that made sense to me. Fun. This makes more sense. Uh, I've been setting up cross save for Destiny 2 so I can redeem some Twitch Prime stuff. Ooh. And as someone who hasn't played any of the expansions. Oh, uh, there you go. That game is almost completely foreign to me now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That happens when you have when you haven't checked out a game in a while. I remember uh, uh, somebody, the last time I played Hearthstone, uh, somebody sent me a message going like, Hey, I watched some of your YouTube video. Uh, I uh, almost didn't recognize any of the cards in the deck you were playing. 
and I didn't understand the mechanics. Oh, God, I haven't played this in a long time. I don't know what's happening in Hearthstone anymore. And it's like, yep, that happens. You miss a couple expansions of a thing. Sometimes, you know, some games are always going to be the same. You're just getting, like, cosmetic stuff and fun stuff, and it's like, whatever. But sometimes you're getting, like, huge changes to to how the thing is played. All right. Uh, that's why every time I jump into Warframe was introduced the ability to dress up the interior of the ship. Uh, Dirty uses a uh, 600 points to ask question. Have you watched end of 10 or 1.0 video from Final Fantasy 14? I have not. Uh, I have not. I have very almost, I would say, absolutely no knowledge of Final Fantasy 14. I have, have never been a Final Fantasy person. Uh, I played one, and I played two, uh, and then I played seven and eight, and no, sorry, seven, and then nothing for a very long time, and then I went to six when I could, and a little of eight, and that's it. And obviously, what I just said was, I just listed a lot of games, but also there are a bunch I haven't played. Uh, so, and I have, I never touched any of the MMOs. Um, Warcraft is the only MMO that I ever put a lot of time and effort into. Uh, really enjoyed my time in Warcraft, but, because I had played EverQuest and never really liked it, and I didn't have good people to play with. I think it was the, the main reason. I never had a good guild. Same thing with City of Heroes. I wish I had been able to play City of Heroes in its heyday. Uh, but I did not know anyone playing City of Heroes. Oh, I knew one person. I had one friend who played City of Heroes. But he was in an RP server. And that terrified me at the time. Uh, and he also like, had a very specific thing. Because he was, he was and is a real interesting, cool cat. But his bit was that he was a robot that really liked the human uh, human players and he wanted to join the human guild but the human guild only let um, humans in it was human only so you couldn't be like artificial intelligence or anything like that because that, that's that that was what they were choosing the RP so he his character was like always trying to join them and he's like yeah I just think you guys are so great I would love to join your guild and they're like no you can't uh, and I'm sure it was annoying to them, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I never, I never played it. Always wanted to. Never had the opportunity. Uh, oh, that was supposed to be under that. Okay. Uh, I've been tempted to dip my toes into 14. But, like, if City of Villains coming back to life isn't enough to make me go back into an MMO, I don't know what will. Yeah, I mean, like, I played a really good MMO for a very long time, uh, and I really enjoyed it. And those are my memories of MMOs. And then I have a few bits and spurts and other things, but nothing life changing or long term. I didn't go back to Warcraft when. Griffin was doing Peacecraft, and I was very tempted to do that, and didn't do that, and Griffin McElroy was doing that. And if I didn't go back to Warcraft for that series, I don't know why, I, I don't think I'll ever go back to it. Uh, okay, so I learned something here, which I should, which maybe there's education there. I, I should be doing the uh, these before I do this. So I'm going to have to basically pull this back. Put on the other pieces there, or no, I don't have to do that because the one crossover there. So when I do the other side, I will do all of these before I do the cross uh, stickers. But when I do this sticker here, I'm going to have to do these first, which now I can see. That's good. Uh, I play 14 every other weekend at the moment. There you go. Uh, 14 is real good.
Yeah, I mean, like, I don't doubt it. I didn't play 11, and, uh, but I watched people play, and I, you know, certainly have a lot of respect for, for that. Uh, I know that people really enjoy those games, and I hope you're having a great time with them. But, uh, it's not, uh, like I said, I had my, I had my fill. The reason why I think that I loved, uh, I'd had such a good time with Warcraft is that I was instantly in a guild with people. I was in a guild with people I knew. There were a couple of people I didn't know that were friends of a friend, but almost everyone else in the guild was, I either knew from a message board or I knew in real life. And a bunch of us had laptops and sometimes we would play in the same room. And it was, even if, you know, while some people got better at it and were moving up and not everyone was in the same position, uh, it was still fun. It was still like a really fun time. Uh, um, and it was like a really great experience that, like, I'm like, oh, this is why I love this. I don't think I could go back to, I don't know, you know, like another, another MMO isn't going to do this, what this is for me, because it's about the people. Uh, and I played for a couple of years. I went through a couple expansions. I had a really good time with it. Uh, our guild kind of fell apart. I ended up joining another guild because people had moved on and, um, I ended up like meeting some other people and ending up in a far less cool guild, but was still nice people. Um, and had fun with it. But yeah, there was a good period of time where that was what all of us wanted to do with our free time was play that game together. Really fun, fun time. All right. Oh. All right, now we can go across, and I think we'll have done all of the stickers on this side of the boat. Lots of stickers to apply. Uh, I think this is probably going to get me to get caught up on One Piece, since now I'm doing this part. Now, now that I'm working on this. All right. No crossover. All right. Yep. That is. I'm going to double check that there. This here. Across. Up and down. Both sides. One down there. All right. Great. We did one side of the boat. Now we're going to do the same thing, but on the other side of the boat. Down there. Uh, my guild in WoW kept splintering off core members and I kept getting dragged along. Having a good guild is a major deal in MMO. Honestly, I play them more solo these days, much less commitment. Yeah. Uh, I think I put in more time. I still put in more time than I did with WoW. Uh, yeah, I put in a lot of time. So, like, here was the thing. I liked being in a guild for, like, the camaraderie and good chat and silly things and hey we're gonna go here and we're gonna do this but I also uh because of my schedule I didn't always play because I worked a lot at night when a lot of my guild mates were playing so some of them would like check in during the day and I had a friend who like could do like the auction house stuff but couldn't really like do anything else uh during the day while he was at work but he could have it open and whatever and would chat and it was kind of like a hangout for him and so I did a lot of stuff solo, which is why I went with, like, rogues or then later druids and, you know, just doing stuff where I could kind of play on my own and, and get some stuff done. Um, but uh, but it was mostly just like, yeah, it was just like a fun, good time, uh, a chance to hang out with my friends and, and play. And then, yeah, there were nights where I could play uh, with them and go and do stuff. And those were the best nights. Uh, 
Oh, this is supposed to line up. Oh, they didn't really line up. Okay. Uh, I think my most hours in a game is still Marvel Heroes, even after all the time I'm being shut down. Yeah, um, I put some hours into that game. I had fun with it while I played it. Uh, I always expected to come back to it, and then just never did. Even when Anthony started working on it, I thought I would play it more. But I just never, never really got the drive to go back into it after the first, like, month and a half of being very into that game. Uh, my most hours is, of any game, is probably um, Fallout New Vegas. I put so many hours into that. Uh, so many, so many playthroughs. I put a lot of hours in on various saves for Fallout 4. Uh, hey, fun thing about Fallout 4, I've only beaten it once. Uh... I generally, most of the time, I stop, uh, I stop playing, uh, around the time of, even before you meet Father. I usually get to the point where you're, uh, gonna get the Interceptor ready, and that's usually when I stop doing the main plot and just try to do all the side plot, get all the characters I need, or, or want, I'll make, you know, make all my friends, and then start having some fun with that. But generally, uh, and then I'll, like, do stuff to get, like, the characters I don't care about. Like, I'll get high affinity with the characters that I like, the, the friends. Like, I still haven't picked up McCready. McCready is still hanging out waiting for me to come meet him because I just have no interest in McCready. Uh, McCready's hanging out. And uh, Paladin Dance is still waiting for me to uh, show up and be like, hey, Paladin Dance, let's let's see what's up. Because I have no interest in meeting those any of those characters. So I just won't. Uh, but you better, you better believe that uh, Eddie Winter is dead and that uh, Piper has a, an idea of what to do about her sister becoming a mini version of her. Uh... And, uh, and Curie having a human body, or, you know, having a artificial human body to order to continue her experiments. Even though it now means that we share DNA, which is gross. It becomes gross, and no one thought of it, apparently. Apparently. Actually grows. Oops. Alright, so we'll do this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, um, I mostly just like, I think I'm due for another start. I just use the start me up to jump a bunch of the beginning stuff so you don't have to worry about, like, talking to the vault tech dude and running for your life and all that you just wake up in the uh you just wake up uh in the vault deal with it after the fact and then i just like building various places and going on doing all the side stuff finding everything on the map taking care of business I'm probably due for another thing because there were some cool additions to uh, some cool mods came out pretty recently. Probably due for another playthrough. I don't know. Oh boy, I uh, I ran around a bunch today. I, you know, just had a bunch of errands to do. Just trying to get stuff done. I'm uh, since I'm going away next Thursday. Uh, as you know, going to PAX, I'm, uh, I've been trying to make sure that I, uh, don't buy, like, too much food, like, just enough that I need for, like, the week, basically, uh, because I don't like to spoil food, but I'll be gone for four days, so, 
Just trying to get all my ducks in a row, as I said. Get everything ready to go. Got more prep work to do for the panels. I'll be promoting the uh, panels again. Trying to get more fake video game titles. This this has been a, 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 a light batch of uh, fake video game titles coming my way. People don't want to retweet with their fake video game titles this time. So I'll try again tomorrow and get some more. I mean, I might just put a call out and not do the retweet thing, but it's good promotion. You know, people who don't know me see that and go, oh. I had a great response to the anime one because there are a bunch of people that... Uh, I'm supposed to start... Tr uh, uh, training for your job next Thursday. All right, Dirty. Okay, get out there. Get it done. Get this going. Let's do this thing. Oop, I forgot. I forgot a sticker. The pill is back. Forgot a sticker. Uh, oh, now I've been bumped for training until June, maybe? Okay, well, find out. You should know. You should make sure you know. Um, uh... I forgot a sticker. Okay. Uh, that is 10. All right. Yes. 10. Um, and then I got one more straight piece sticker to go on after that. Um, but yeah, uh, the folks that are doing, you know, are associated with the loading ready run that are doing the, uh, my other panel and they have a fan base, which is great for me. I'm in a bunch of panels. It's going to be fun. Uh, a week from tonight, I will be doing um, the Easy Baking Challenge panel, which I will host on the stream. I will. It's on like, uh, it's on Twitch, and I will host it, so you'll be able to watch it here if you like. Uh, same thing with Improvised Postmortem next week. Uh, that I will uh, stream, and then I'll be filming Pat Bear's Anime Club, and it'll go out that Monday. So if you uh, if you want to watch it on a Monday, you're more than welcome to check that out. Uh, and that'll be a fun time. Uh, I'm going to take a photo of this, because we're almost done with our stream here. Almost ready to go. Just got to take a, a photo of, of this here for... That's... Uh, Great. Oh, yeah. Saw Sonic, and the way they included Sanic was weird. Crazy conspiracy guy bugs the cops about the Blue Devil since he's the only person to kind of see him at that point. Yeah. So, uh, look, is the Sonic movie blatantly a movie for kids? Yes. Is the inclusion of Olive Garden weird and Maybe instead of Olive Garden, yes. Is it completely and utterly bizarre that the fast food chain Sonic isn't the fa isn't like the fast food or ca or fast dining thing in the movie? It's unbelievable. Uh, the fact that it's not Sonic and that they don't they aren't selling a chili dog for the movie is unbelievable. Uh, Zillow ad, isn't it, though? Yeah, I mean, but it's just like, it's just one of those things where I'm like, what is happening right now? I'm not mad about it. I was just very surprised. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed that Sonic movie. I think it's really fun and silly, and I'm glad that it exists, and I was happy to watch it. Uh, but Sonic couldn't... No, I mean, like, they got the no. I'm saying they got their Olive Garden money. They got their sponsorship with Olive Garden. They got product placement. You know, like I'm sure that funded the project quite a bit, and that's rad. But I'm saying if you're gonna include a fast casual or fast food dining establishment in your Sonic the Hedgehog movie, perhaps it would be Sonic the Restaurant. Just seems like a no-brainer to me. But that's just me. That that's who I am. Anyway. Uh, I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to run an ad. You don't have to watch it at the end of the stream, but if you want to watch it, you can if you're not a subscriber. My next build stream will be Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Same channel, same time. 
Uh, I hope you'll join me for that. Um, and uh, we'll be continuing to slowly build this kit and put a whole lot of stickers on it. Uh, I'll see you in the next Build with Bear. Uh, thanks very much for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Goodbye. Goodbye.